it's your boy Fat Rob, and I'm here to let you know you tuned in to the Riding Dirty Radio Show with Uncle Vic XL and your girl Boss Lady Bird. Now let's get it jumping, yo! Yo 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 yo! What up, yo? What up, Bird? What up, Uncle Vic? Man, maintaining, maintaining. How you been? I've been good, sir. How about yourself? Man, I you know what? If I was doing any better, they would lock me up. They would oh, lock no. me up, man. D- despite, despite, you know, the little turbulences that's, you know, been in my life, they've been minor turbulences. It hasn't been nothing major. Um, I'm doing good, talking to you. We finna get back at it. And nothing makes me more happier. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I, I want to start the show by saying, Bird, I want to recognize and say what up to the good people at Yo ATL Raps Awards. We did not win, but I want to say thank you to those good people for acknowledging us. And thank you to each and every person that nominated us and made it possible for the Ron Dirty Radio podcast to be even considered to win an award. Right. Yeah. We'll get it next year. We're going to definitely, Bird, right now. Um, we're gonna mark it on the calendar. This is this is our campaign year to be nominated for every award show, podcast award show possible. We're on the campaign trail. So any of the viewers, any of the listeners, if you know award show, let me and Boss Lady Bird know because we're on the campaign trail. We're trying to bring home all the awards for podcasts this year. Yeah. All right, but I do want to say shout out to a friend of the Riding Dirty uh, Radio Show. I got to say salute to Mr. Zach Spade because Zach Spade actually won Country Artist of the Year at the Yo! ATL Raps Award Show. Yeah, way to go, Zach. And I would like to think Boss Lady Bird and Vic XL were part of pushing him to prominence. I mean, I feel like we were one of the first people to put that music out there for him and uh, look at him now. So, yeah. Yeah. His first of many awards. First of many awards. Yeah, congratulations to Zach. All right, so, Bird, we're going we to just go off the top of the dome because there's been so much going on. I'm just going to throw some things at you, and I just want to know how you feel about it. Uh, let's get it. All right, first and foremost, Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole. Kendrick, I ain't going to lie. Kendrick Lamar, there's a song out right now called Like That which is Metro Boomin featuring Future and Kendrick Lamar. And Kendrick Lamar goes off on J. Cole and Drake. And then J. Cole comes back and disses Kendrick Lamar. And then two days later, he apologizes on stage. My question to you is this, before I even get to Drake. Do you think in rap beef, in battle rap, should 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 you apologize? There's no apology. You said what you said. I think it, it's more honorable to stand on what you said. To to walk it back and apologize, I think that's pussy footing. That's a pussy foot move. You ain't shit. Okay. I, you know what? I love J. Cole, one of my favorite artists, but he did make he did make me feel away when he apologized. He did. And he not only apologized, then he brought Kendrick Lamar on stage. What? What? But on the other side, Drake responds. And when Drake responds, Drake dishes everybody from Metro Boomin, Kendrick Lamar. He took a shot at J. Cole. He took a shot at Rick Ross. J. Cole, I mean, I'm sorry, Drake went crazy. Have you heard the Drake record called Push Ups? Yeah, I think I, I, I peeped it when, it when he first dropped it. Man, Drake. Went twenty against one against twenty. How do you feel about Drake responding? And not only did he respond, he's been trolling Kendrick Lamar now for two weeks. How do you feel about Drake, a person who people view as being soft, standing on what he say and trolling? Hey, I mean, he obviously meant what the fuck he said. I mean, I, I'd rather see him stand on it than walk it back. Like, nah, it's all good. No, nah, man, you said what you said. <laughs> I mean, it's clearly beef. So. Beef Good for Drake. Good for Drake. All right. And more beef news. Quavo and Chris Brown. 
Why see, I'm probably know? on the uh, unpopular opinion because I'm not. I'm just not a Chris Brown fan. Fan like I don't like Breezy like that. Uh, a lot of people say Quavo shit was trash. I don't think it was trash. I think it was a a solid a solid diss track. Now, can I say it was better? I, I would be biased just because I don't like Chris Brown. Chris Brown's was obviously better, but I, it definitely is diss track season out here, though. Look, I ain't gonna lie. I agree with you. Now, was Chris Brown record better? Yes. But, let's be honest. Who out here who is a fan of the Migos music Expected to get a classic disc record from Quavo. Nobody. Exactly. That's not they. That's not they get. That's not they thing. Uh, to me, they make. I don't know happy trap music. I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> like they don't really talk too much about killing us. You know all that diss and shit. So I mean, what I don't know what people really expected from Quavo, but what he gave them, I I think it was solid. I think it was solid and. You know how in hip hop there's this unwritten rule. I don't even know who made this up, but you gotta respond in like forty eight hours. And yeah, I think they, was, yeah, what is that? What is that? I think I would rather take a week and you know do my shit right rather than hurry up in a studio just to respond to somebody because it's a, a rule. Apparently, people give Gene a, a lot of shit about his responses to people, but he's just kind of a perfectionist and he ain't gonna lay down no trash so i don't like that rule honestly i'm gonna be honest it's an unwritten rule um i never subscribe to it um i think you respond when you respond i don't give a damn if it's a year later i That's think it. you respond like who who okay so because this is how i feel about it say i'm mad at boss lady bird right but bird right. don't even know i'm mad at her right you don't even know i'm mad at you i've been mad right. at you since january and I, on May 1st, I dropped this record that I've possibly been working on since January. But then I say, you got 48 hours to respond. Yeah, well, yeah that's you? not fair. That's not fair to the respondent because nobody knows how long you took on your. Right. I so, agree. I agree. So that is some weird, unwritten rule in hip hop. I don't know who created, whether it was reactors, artists. But you know what? You respond when you respond. You get dealt with when you get dealt with. You don't tell me when to fight. You don't tell me when no. to fight. No. So, but from what I'm hearing now, they've made up also. Oh, really? From what I'm hearing, but I'm hearing some conflicting information. Over the past weekend, Quavo had his um Quavo does this thing called Huncho Day. Um, it's uh -huh. for the community. It does like a flag football game and has kids out. It's just real festive. And from what I heard, Chris Brown was there and they squashed the beef. I'm not sure if that's true. But I've also heard that Quavo did a show uh, somewhere and Chris Brown bought all the tickets and then with 50 people show up. So I don't know what's Oh, true. shit. <laughs> that's cold. <laughs> that's trolling right there. That's trolling for real at another level. That shit's crazy. Well, you know that's been done before. You know who created that, right? Who, who, who? Tell me, tell me, tell me. 50 Cent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He bought all he bought all the tickets on a Ja Rule show. Yep. <laughs> and, yeah, I remember that now. So that's wild. Hey man, that's 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 trolling at its best. Now, I guess the yeah. only good to say is you're gonna still get your money because the ticket was that's sold. it i mean he still got paid and you know whatever so what yeah whatever but yeah that's wild but that's wild. but when that video footage come out of 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 them 50 people at your show it looks crazy i bet so well, hell everybody was in the front row shit. <laughs> right right it makes you look so crazy it makes you look like dang, he ain't draw, but 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 fifty people, God. yeah, that's crazy. So that's hey crazy. man, but that's hip hop and trolling for you. That's hip hop. That's and it. All right, bird. So this is the moment. Are you ready to issue this apology? Now the trial ain't quite over over yet. Now is it? 
No, the trial is not nowhere near over. The trial is not nowhere near over. But from what I'm being told, because you, Boss Lady Bird, who's going to stand on it, said that if it doesn't come out that Gunner is telling, you would apologize, right? I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell Gunner my bad. My okay. bad, Gunner. Hold on, hold on. Let me give it to you. Let me give it to you. Let me give it to you. This was Gunner. I'm reading this directly offline. Gunner will not be called on to testify against Young Thug or his YSL crew. Judge Ural Glanville recently ordered the state to reduce the initial witness list following a motion by attorneys for co-defendant Yak Gotti, which suggests it would take three more years to get through all 700 names. So Gunner will not be testifying. But it was a possibility that he would. They just don't want to take the time, huh? Well, All right, Gunner. But if they felt like he had information that could stick, they wouldn't take him off the testify list. So obviously he didn't have no information that would stick. So me and Gunner are waiting. We're waiting. Yeah, my bad, Gunner. My bad. You solid. Uh, you solid. My bad for putting that on you, bro. And you know what? Um, now I'm very interested in seeing because there were some people um, like Lil Baby who disassociated themselves with Ghana because of this, this case. I'm very interested in seeing now at this point where they continue, where they rebuild the relationships. You know what I'm saying? Now, because I, I understand how people don't want to be associated with you when your name is coming up in a situation like that. So do you think, like, as an artist, if you're gonna, do you accept the apologies of, like, a, a little no, baby? I mean, cause I feel like if we was that good of friends, you should have had more, uh, or you should have known me better and had more faith in me that that wasn't my character type, but you were real quick to call me. So I'm not friends with Gunner, so it don't matter what the fuck Boss Lady Bird said. <laughs> But right, right. When, it, when it's your homie and they looking at you when you think that, you, I mean, y'all know me better than that. We're friends and probably done been through some shit where I kept my mouth shut before. So if I was going to, nah, I probably wouldn't be too forgiving on that shit, honestly. But that's just me. Maybe I'm petty. Yeah, um, I, I probably would definitely be, I probably would definitely be out and about. Saying, oh, no, even, was even if they do reconcile and just let it go like shit, I don't think it, the friendship will be the same or as solid as maybe it was what once was. Yeah, because you're probably going to feel like these people just use feel me. some type of way. You're going to feel some type of way. Yeah, like they just don't trust me. Like you just feel like you're going to have to watch yourself around them all the time. Like I just, yeah, I don't know. Well. Shout out to Gunner though, because he's definitely yeah. Shout doing out to Gunner for keeping the ten toes down and uh and being solid, being solid, keeping the mouth shut. Yeah. You know who else I got to give a shout out to? Who that? And we always find a way to talk about her, so I'm gonna find a way to talk about her now. Gotta say shout out to that girl, Miss Licky, man. Miss Licky has been on the Kanye West workout plan. And that girl has lost. Yeah, I seen that on her IG the other day. She sure has. Man, and she is, you know, and I'm, I'm well, when we first were introduced to Miss Leaky, she was looking good. Um, but when I started seeing the transformation pictures, um, she definitely has done her thing. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to the Kanye West workout plan. I, I mean, shit, maybe I need to get out on get on the Kanye West workout plan. I kind of, oh. I, I mean, she does look good and all that, but I kind of liked her thick, honestly. But that's just me. I, I mean, but you know what? It don't matter but, to me. I mean, to be more healthy and do what you, you know, uh, good for her to be able to do it. I mean, because getting fit, like, it's not easy. It's not easy. Oh, no, and it takes a lot of discipline. A lot of this. It does. It, it does. It really does. So, um, 
Diddy. I gotta say, I gotta say that, and y'all gonna be like, what the fuck is wrong with Boss Lady Bird? But I gotta shout out to Glorilla because I'm really starting to like that bitch. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, I'm gonna be honest. I ain't mad at Glorilla. Did you see, Um, and, and shout out to Glorilla who was recently arrested for DUI in Atlanta, in Gwinnett County. No, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and Glow answer to everything was, I'm straight. <laughs> I'm straight. <laughs> You've been drinking, ma'am. I'm straight. <laughs> yeah, I'm straight. <laughs> but yeah, she she rattled all all these 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 girls out here. I have to say, Glow Rilla, she really growing on me. Hey, did you see the video? And then then she had a little nip slip <laughs> while she was doing some riding test. You see that? She wild. She hey wild. man, get them go. Get them glow. I like that. I, I, I like glow. I like that song. Um, yeah, I've been where I be watching shorts. I've heard it so much. I'm like, God, I think I'm a glow real fan, though. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really, 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 really rocking with glow real. Shout out to glow real too for moving to the A. There are so many rappers and entertainers who live in Atlanta. Um, shout out to her though. And glow, you can't be up there in, in Gwinnett County acting like that. You cannot be, you can't do that. You can't be up. You cannot be doing it. Yeah, I think she know that now. <laughs> yeah, she, she had to find that the hard way, but I think she know now. Um. Also, in hip hop news, well, this is not really hip hop news, but this is industry news, and we cover it all. Jelly Roll has left social media because of being body shamed. How do you feel about it? to me because he's really uh he's really I think really dedicated himself to losing the weight they said he's lost like 70 pounds but we all know people out here just cruel but I think with the support I think he'll be back he's got a great support system uh which is everybody that he surrounds himself most and probably most importantly his wife bunny shout out to bunny I love me some bunny um I think he'll be back, but I, I at the same time I get it as somebody who's been through the same thing who who goes through it constantly on YouTube. Uh, you just gotta know what and who you are, and not let them comments bother you. Uh, but yeah, I was I was real upset to hear that. Uh, I hope he comes back with a vengeance. Uh, it's just sad. I mean, as much as he's been through and as hard as he's worked to get where he is and have the presence that he has in the industry for, for something so stupid. It's uh, just to take him, you know, take him away and, and have that, you know, cause it's way different nowadays. Like, you know, when I was young, you never were so connected to these, these people, these artists and, and shit that you looked up to because we didn't have all the social media to where you get to see so much of their life. And feel connected with them. And for, for just a few people that have a problem with the man's weight and how he looks to take that away from all the people that are encouraged and uh, really look up to this man for all he's been through and the music that he puts out and all the people that it touches. Like, it's just sad, man. It's sad. Yeah, it, it's sad that, I mean, body shaming. Man, look, you're right. Look at what Jelly Roll is doing for communities. Look at what how Jelly Roll, Jelly Roll, we talked about this the last time we recorded, how he missed the iHeart Video Award show because he was at a uh, juvenile detention center speaking. Yeah, and, and he put a recording, uh, recording uh, like a studio at the, uh, at the juvenile uh, detention center, just like he said he would. And he does a lot. Uh, for Nashville that I even think goes uh, unrecognized and just that's a good solid dude man I've met Jelly two or three times at shows when they were still ten dollars to see him you know at just a hole in the wall place in Knoxville and Chattanooga and uh, I remember him buying the whole venue pizza when when he probably ain't even have it like that and uh, oh it's just it's been such an amazing thing to watch his journey and now for that to be like I said taken away from the people that really uh, enjoy to watch his journey. Like it's just sad, and I I hope we see. I think we will see Jelly come back. Uh, like I said he's got a great support system, and but it's just sad for him to even have to 
to go through it to me like but i yeah. think he'll overcome it i think he'll continue to get the weight off uh but I, you know what i don't i don't even want jelly to get too small like honestly i mean i know it'd be good for his health but like i just can't like i've seen him pretty skinny before uh back when uh let's see it was around 2016 or 17 when he come off his addiction kills tour and he was having some heart problems and shit and he dropped a uh, fucking like 180 pounds like it wasn't shit and then during covid uh you know he put a lot of it back on but i so i know he's perfectly capable of doing it i just think he's doing it differently this time but man yeah shout out to jelly roll uh fuck him doll fuck him just like you always said hate you're gonna hate let him hate on the hate gonna go on just do you man mm -hmm. you've come too far to let uh some people worried about what you look like to, to keep you away from the people that you really encourage and uh that just rock with your music you know like he said he makes music for for the fucking hard you know the people that's been there that, that can relate to the shit that he talk about and uh I, I I can't just shout out to Jelly man. We with you though. Look, I ain't gonna lie. Um, I think you know because Jelly does a lot for the community. Um, and you know what I really like more than anything. Um, we talk about community and music and balance. Jelly Roll is one of those artists right now. If you slowly look at Jelly Roll, and you know me and you both dibble and dabble in hip hop, we dibble and dibble and dabble in country rap jelly roll is that one artist who is trying to bridge that gap like he's mm -hmm. he's performing at i think it's called the stage coach festival or something like that but yeah he did that over the weekend it was cool to see him and uh it was cool to see him and t-pain on stage doing a toby Keith song together i thought that shit was fire yeah. yes. i'm a big t-pain fan i'm a big jelly roll fan so to me uh, let me look. We gotta come back to the T Pain thing in a minute because they something I, I got to say to bro and that fucking big booty contest that he put on because that shit was rigged. The bitch with the biggest booty did not win. I don't know what the fuck y'all and them judges was doing, but let me not get off on, on that right now. But yeah, to see Jelly Roll and T Pain on stage, uh, singing Toby Keith, that I thought that shit was awesome. Well, shout out, man. First of all, shout out Jelly Roll. Um, just like when um Killer Mike won his Grammy, mm -hmm. the first person to congratulate him was Jelly Roll. Yep. It's like, man, you know, we talk about these racial divides and how music can bring us together. Jelly Roll has not forgotten about his hip hop roots, and he's doing everything he he's been on stage for three six. It's like, man, he's pulling people who supported him up, and I think that is so dope. And I think that's the unity we need in our communities. You know, sometimes people with the music get a little divisive and, and kind of make it racist. And I think Jelly Roll is one of those people who's like, no, nah, man, we're just going to put good people together. And I think that's what I commend about Jelly Roll the most, trying to bridge that gap between race relations and giving back to people who are in the situation that he was once in. That's why I think he's one of the, the dopest just by his heart. Do you uh do you think we're gonna get another and I hope we do. I hope like hell he just gives us one more. Do you think we'll get another rap album from Jelly Roll? No, I don't. Really? See, he's teased about it for a long time when he first got his deal or distributing deal, whatever you want to call it, that he was gonna do a country album, a rock album, and a rap album. And I've yet to see the, the rap album and I really, really, really hope it is something that he, he does fall back on his originals because he, he's a phenomenal rapper can't nobody tell jelly he's not and i just really hope that now that he's known like he is that the people that don't know the old jelly get the opportunity to hear that kind of mainstream i really hope so i'm kind of like you i doubt it but i really hope so well I, I i mean i hope so i just think because of where he's at and how big he is and to the community that supports him I think we'll get a verse or two on some records or maybe on an album. He might have a song that's all rap. I just don't foresee Jelly doing an all rap album just because well, of how I keep, hope, I keep hoping that's why he's uh, really bridging that gap. So then it won't be such a, 
a drastic thing when he does draw. I just hope he does. I really do. I want to nah. see. I want to see Alex King on the joint because usually when it, you know back in the day when Jelly was dropping his rap albums, usually whatever feature that Alex King was on was always usually my favorite. He's a he's a phenomenon. Uh, independent rapper himself and just i'd like to see uh some more little white shit with him three six i think that i think it's uh an opportune moment for them to do that and i really think they should even just for one more just one more i don't disagree and i hope we get it um i just don't think we will but i hope I'm, i want to be wrong on this one tell your t-pain tell your t-pain because i didn't know t-pain had a big booty contest do yeah, they had a sold out show. It's been about a month ago down there in Atlanta. Him and uh, what's his little his little buddy Cash? Uh, they had a biggest booty contest, and uh, they, he streamed it live on YouTube. But the bitch was like, they was up there measuring them bitches' ass. And, and uh, let's see, Carlos Miller, um, Nav Green, and then the two girls that do the Poor Minds uh podcast was was the judges. But the the lady that won, she did not have the biggest booty, I think. Uh, and it was funny to me because <laughs> I'm pretty sure she didn't swing the way that Nav Green thought that she did. I'm pretty sure she was more into the ladies herself than she was the men. But he seemed quite infatuated with her, and I think that's why she won. But she she was not the best candidate uh, all all around, and she definitely did not have the biggest booty. Uh, you know, it wasn't like it was a big prize. I think it was only like five thousand dollars, and it was it was a pretty good show. But um, the lady with the biggest booty did did not win. I was kind of disappointed in that. But uh, shout out to all the contestants that did make it because they were some big fine women up on that stage. But uh, the lady that won definitely was was not the biggest booty. She was not the biggest booty, but it is what it is. Speaking of T Pain in Atlanta, right? Yeah. A week a week ago, T Pain here in Atlanta was involved in a car accident. Matter of fact, I'm gonna read this directly from KTLA. Rapper and singer T Pain said he was a victim of a hit and run crash in Atlanta last week. All right, they had videos from the scene. Basically, someone Crash in the T pain, you know. I know times is rough these days, but whoever fucking ran into the back of my G wag my my G darn truck, and whoever just hit me and my wife, my road manager, my driver, whoever just did that shit and drove the fuck off, life's about to get so much worse. That's what he said on video. That video is actually floating around on YouTube if you can check it out. Um, but the gentleman actually has been arrested who um hit t-pain so thank god he's alive thank god no one was hurt and yeah, um, yeah. He, he utilized social media to actually help the person get caught right right uh yeah shout out to t-pain all well wishes i'm glad everybody was good uh and i'm glad they got the guy he that, that was wrong you don't just do that and run off i mean you no that's crazy that's crazy he ended the video by and saying, now it's that much worse on dude. It's, it's going to be that much worse on dude now. He said, I know things are going bad for a lot of people. I don't know if you was drunk. I don't know if you ain't pay your insurance. I don't know what's going on in your life. I'm in Atlanta. And these are the worst drivers I have ever encountered in my life. <laughs> but the gentleman was caught. and." Um, arrested and everybody is fine but he utilized social media to help this gentleman get caught i don't know if he had to change or turn himself in or what the case may be but hey man y'all can't be hitting the back of t-pain shit and riding no. away <laughs> now you know he really ran to the back of my shit we would have worked something out via the cash right right so I don't know, but I'm sure the gentleman didn't even know he hit T Pain. I'm sure he just hit somebody and was like, skirt, skirt, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you I'm probably out. right. He probably didn't realize. Oh shit. All right, I gotta say this before we get up out of here, Bird. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. boys and girls, um, you know, me and Bird I always like to give you an artist, a spotlight artist. Well, the spotlight artist that I want to talk about 
he goes by the name of Mr. 359. And we just dropped an incredible project on Mr. 359 called Whiskey Shots. Uh, Mr. 359 is from Alabama, I think Decatur, Alabama. Extraordinary artist, king of country trap. If you get an opportunity, representing all them swamp donkeys, representing all them swamp donkeys. Hey man, if ain't nobody representing for the swamp donkeys, my man three five nine is representing for the swamp. Uh, and I love him for it. I love him and for it so much. <laughs> and if you are a swamp donkey, right now, put your hand over your heart and say, "I am a donkey." I'm a okay. donkey, 85 pounds, soaker wet, and she don't give a fuck. <laughs> that right. Instead of change out your ashtray, swamp donkeys. Shout out to all y'all. But no, man, y'all definitely check out Mr. 359 Whiskey Shots. is available on SoundCloud, Audio Mac, YouTube, as well as Mixcloud. Dope, dope mixtape from beginning to the end. Now, yes, before. Sir. Before we leave, Bird, I want to let everybody know when you put it on YouTube, you can't take it back because they got it on video. If you're an artist out there and you watch this show or if you're a friend of an artist out there, me and Bird will be doing a weekly countdown, the Our Dirty Dozen, for independent artists. So when you watch these videos, drop your links or, or leave your comments, suggest artists or songs that we need to add to our weekly countdown. If they worthy. If they worthy. Now, now <laughs> just because you drop your link, me and Bird are going to check it out. Mm -hmm. And you want two things you got to do to even be considered. You got to subscribe to the Riding Dirty Radio page and you got to subscribe to Boss Lady Bird's page. If you're not subscribed to both pages, don't be dropping the link. Or don't be telling us to play your jump. Because there's no need. Because you ain't going to watch. That's it. So you got to subscribe up. Or you got to send somebody to subscribe up. You got to share the countdown. You know, we got to get that together. It's a partnership. It's a partnership. That's it. All right, Bert. Let them know because I know you ran into some difficulties. <laughs> that don't hate. You got a brand new page. Let them know how to find you. I'm still Boss Lady Bird right here on the YouTube. You can still get me over on the IG. If by chance you can't find me yet. Uh, just head over to the IG, the Bird 420. Hit me up. We'll link. Uh, you can also hit me in the email, birdbuzz85 at gmail.com. Send me that new music. We're going to get back popping. Ain't nothing stopping. Yeah, bars. Bars. Get bird that music. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back riding the radio show. We're back in full effect. If anything y'all want to, you know what y'all need to do? All you artists out there, all you friends of artists, if you got some dirt or some gossip or some tea on your favorite artist or entertainer, email Bird, and then me and Bird going to chop it up and see if it's topic worthy. No. Yeah. Because we definitely will dish out the dirt. But we gotta now we got to do our due diligence, so you just can't be sending us stuff and think we're going to talk about it. Oh, yeah, we're going to do our research. We're going to do our research. Yeah, you can't be you can't be saying Spank got three legs and and we just gonna say you know Spank got three legs. You better send me a picture of Spank's third legs. All I gotta say, I gotta have right. some receipts. Right, but we're gonna bring it to y'all hard and heavy and moving forward because we're trying to come home with some hardware in twenty twenty five podcast of the year. Bert, anything you want to add before we get up out of here? Nah, it was good to be back up in this joint with you, Vic. Uh, I'm looking forward to what's ahead. I know a lot of people uh been missing us and missing the weekly shows and the camaraderie. Uh, of course, we all miss the duel, but at the same time, we understand life situation. We appreciate the night shift. Uh, all us, all us, uh, all of us late nighters. Uh, shout out to never mind. Uh, but yeah. I uh, hey man, shout out to everybody supports. What me and Bird do, um, we love you guys. Anytime you spend one moment listening to what we do and what we create, we know you could be listening to anybody else, but you're listening to us. And for that, we appreciate you. So to next episode, y'all yeah, be on the look shout out. Star yeah, yeah. Oh, you shout out what Bird? What? Star pussy. The guy we had on the night shit wasn't. I like that guy. 
he got he got a great mind. No, the fact that you said it threw me off. <laughs> Look, everybody right now, shout out my guy Bemo Slim. He got a brand new joint called Porn Star Pussy. It's available everywhere. Y'all, please go check it out, man. To the next episode, your boy Big XL. Yeah, I'm boss lady bird. We gone. Vic, your crazy cousin hell brother coming to you. Uh, getting ready to grab me two beers and come watch the best show on the YouTube. It'd be Riding Dirty Radio with Big Vic and Boss Lady Bird. Much respect, y'all. Keep killing it in 2024. Thank <laughs> you.